What is up Bertini fam? Now as you can see by today's title of the video, yes, this is not clickbait. We are in fact wide bodying, wide body, wide body yingings, wide body. We're making my Mini Cooper a wide body Mini Cooper. Specifically, my F56 Mini Cooper JCW will now become a wide body Mini Cooper. And I'm gonna take you through that process today. Now, before I go ahead and start explaining everything, if you have not yet joined the Bertini fam, go ahead and click that subscribe button, follow along my journey on all of my build series content. You're basically supporting the unicorns, supporting the whales, supporting bikers with big beards and bigger bellies. You're supporting whatever it is that you wanna support when you click that subscribe button and the notification bell, so just do it. Now, before I go ahead and go through that whole spiel where I tell you to roll the intro and do that whole thing, something I wanna say. I did a ton of research online trying to find a wide body kit and the right wheels to wide body my Mini Cooper, and like I had all these questions and I could not find a source of information online, let alone a video of somebody doing this. This is going to be a super dope setup, by the way, because I did everything from tires to wheels, sensors, I mean the whole nine. So with that being said, go ahead and roll the intro. All right, now here's the deal. This is what I found. Um, so there's a company by the name of VAD Design, V-A-D Design. They're the ones who produce these really, really super sick wide body kit mini fender flares. These things are really, really nice, really high quality stuff. Not all of these parts are created equal. Now, what I mean by that is VAD, VAD Design, goes above and beyond to produce like these super, super high quality fender flares. Like this is even beyond OEM quality. These things are just super, really, really, really nice. Now, because these things are as nice as they are, oh my gosh, they just look so damn aggressive. But because these things are as nice as they are, I have a friend of mine who I've actually featured before in a previous video who owns a body shop, who's gonna be helping me out with getting these things installed. And then I think I might either want a color match or get these things painted in a gloss black so our piano black to match my roof. So we'll see on that. Now I'm sure many of you are wondering how wide can you actually get with this Mini Cooper? What kind of tires can you get on this Mini Cooper? I'm gonna be able to fit. Actually, let me just show you. So I'm gonna be able to fit these monster of a set of tires on the rear. These are 255, 35, 18. So yes, 18 inch, right, or 18 inch wheels is what they go on, 35 and 255, massive, absolutely massive. Now that design does offer a complete kit with wheel flares um, or wide body kit, however you wanna call it, and wheels and tires if you need it. Now, because I'm in Florida, the tires that I decided to go with that are best for the terrain over here are these Michelin Pilot Sport 4S. So these are like bad, bad mamma jammas. If you see here, these are like the best of the best. Yes, this is the cost of like a Lamborghini payment. I get it, but at least we'll have some good quality rubber. Worst thing that could happen is your rubber breaks. And we don't want our rubber to break. That's what she said. <laughs> Michael, please. There he is. Please. There he is. Come on. And then now, in terms of our front tires, our front tires are 245, 35, 18. So the front tires are also just super, super massive and super beefy. Now, you're probably wondering, what are we going to put all this meat on? I have here a set of super, super lightweight wheels from VAD Design. Now, these are semi-forged, so basically what this means is these are gonna be super, super lightweight, and I know because I've already pulled these things out of the box with one hand, and let me tell you, they are really, really light. Now, VAD Design has a bunch of designs that you can, wow, that was funny. Anyways, VAD Design has a bunch of designs that you can go with in terms of styling. This is the style that I like best, but you can do different colors, different styles, etc. But these wheels are made for his wide body kit, and they are beautiful, and they are lightweight, and that's exactly what we needed. Now, just to show you, the rears are 18 by 10 with a super ultra secret offset. I'm just kidding. I'm not keeping any secrets in this video because I couldn't find any information on anything, so I'm going to 
gonna share everything with you. And then the fronts are 18 by nine. And for those of you who are wondering, the offset, I believe, on both of these is, I don't know if the proper way of saying it is like negative five ET or five ET, but basically five ET is the perfect offset for the bad design wide body kit. Now, because I figured we're doing a bunch of everything brand new, I'm not going to take the sensors, the TPMS sensors, out of my old wheels, so I went ahead and purchased a bunch of new wheel sensors. Now, I'm going to try to get as much filming as possible at my boy's shop, but of course, I want to let them do their thing. I'll walk through the process of what they're going to actually have to do in order to fit these wide body fender flares onto my Mini Cooper. Now, don't get me wrong. Is this something that you could do at home? Probably. But if you have a high quality body shop nearby you, it's like, I mean, it's a no brainer, might as well go ahead and take it to that high quality body shop. This way they could go ahead and fit it professionally and get it done the right way and not cut any corners, of course. Now that we have all of that out of the way, this is something that I've been waiting a long time for. Just so you know, I've actually planned on putting this kit on my vehicle or these fender flares on my vehicle before I even owned the Mini Cooper. That's how long it's been. Anyways, enough talking. Let's go ahead and head over to my boy Kamal's shop and get them started on this Mini Cooper. So just got here to Dynamic Designs in Central Florida. Now, for those of you who don't know and might not have seen one of my Harley videos before, but Kamal is a boy of mine. He, Kamal is the owner of Dynamic Designs. He's actually the one who did some paint work for me on my custom Harley Davidson bagger. Now listen, can you install a wide fender kit on a Mini Cooper or any vehicle on your own? I mean, I guess you probably could, but especially when you have friends in the industry who are experts at doing custom work like this, it's kind of like a no-brainer to not take it to them, or a no-brainer to take it to them. Anyways, He's gonna be having his guys fit the wide fenders on. They're gonna be doing all the cutting, they're gonna be doing the molding, they're gonna be doing the install, and they're gonna be doing the paint work on the Mini Cooper. Now, I'm not respraying the entire Mini Cooper. I'm gonna be spraying the portions of the fender flares. I'm also gonna be um, spraying some pieces that we got, some special pieces that we got, which you'll probably see, uh, or by now you might have already seen in a video before this. Um, but anyways, he's gonna be painting these things for me because I wanna go with a gloss black look on some of these parts. And so they're also gonna be painting. So they're gonna be doing the cutting, the fitting, the molding, and the painting work. Now I'm super stoked to show you their work. Kamal has done tons of wide body kits. They do a lot of custom work here at his shop. And so obviously if you are in Florida and you're looking for a quality installer, somebody who knows how to do wide body kits, reliable, they're great, they have amazing customer service, and their pricing is beyond fair. Highly recommend, I'll include links to their website in the description box below. They're here in Central Florida like me, but they get cars from all over the United States people send for them to do their work because that's how good their custom quality work is. By the way, here's their number. Like I said, I will put links in the description box below, but um, it's Dynamic Designs. Their phone number is 407 274 4810. So anyways, I'll put links once again in the description box below if you are interested in getting custom work done, paint, body work, etc. Go ahead and check them out. Anyways, we'll go ahead and jump into it. This way we can get some work done on this Mini Cooper. So just want to quickly show you all here what it's actually like what we're all going to be basically be doing. So we are going to cut back on this portion of the metal. Now, just as an FYI, this is not something that you necessarily have to do, especially not on the front. So on the front, you could technically just leave it like this because of the gap, but at some point, and I wanna make sure that if I ever decide I wanna lower it even more than the inch that I've already lowered it, I wanna make sure that I have enough room here. And so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be trimming back all of this metal, completely cutting off all of this metal here, probably, about an inch to an inch and a quarter is gonna come completely off. This way, if I ever do wanna slam the vehicle, I have the option and I'm not hitting onto anything, right? It's better we do this now than have to come back and redo all of this later. Now, once again, though, if you were interested in fitting the VAD design um, fender flares, you could technically leave the fronts completely alone, 
and I'll show you on the rears what you'd have to do on the rears, but basically on the rears, you would just need to roll it up, but once again, we're gonna be cutting. It's up to you if you wanna go that route or not, but yeah, I'm gonna be cutting this, and we're gonna be cutting on the rear, so I'll show you that here in a second. And now, just to show you on the rear side, we're gonna be taking off all of this portion from right about here. I'll go ahead and make the lines here in a second to show you all exactly what we're gonna be taking off on this rear portion. Um, but we're gonna be coming up to about right, let's say right in this area right here. All this is gonna be um, cut off from here all the way down here and that should give us plenty of uh, space. And then we're gonna take these out and we're gonna see if we can get some riv nuts in there um, to be able to bolt this on. Once again, you don't have to do it. You could technically just use like the tiger seal or some sort of like bond to get it to stick on, but we are gonna try to get some nuts in this thing. So we're gonna um, rib nut, possibly rib nut these pieces, like take this out and then put some rib nuts in there uh, to see if we can get some bolts into this uh, rear fender flare. The moment I've been waiting for for a while now, we're about to cut the fenders. Or, yeah, we're about to cut the fender, fender wells, we're about to, we're about to do the cutting. After this, there's no turning back. So I got a souvenir, look at this. This is crazy. Oh my gosh, it's coming alive. We're doing a test fitting here. And as you can see, so far it's looking really, really good. It's kind of like all finally sinking in that this is actually happening. So to give you a final update of what this will actually look like and what it should be when you do this exact same thing. Um, so one, as you can see, we've grinded all of that metal off. We've cleaned up and deburred all of these edges. Um, and then the other thing that we did was, is we drilled holes into the actual fender flare, but using these mounting points right here, and that's actually where we're going to um, bolt up. The other thing that we're gonna do for the front bumper, or, or that we did, is this bolt is normally on this side. So this is typically like flipped around and reversed. Um, flipped around, we're gonna reverse it, right, Missy Elliott? Well, we did it now um, the opposite direction. This way we can utilize this also as a mounting point here. And then what we did on this thing, which by the way, this is all gonna be cleaned and touched up and painted, but um, we grinded the tabs off just so that now it'll sit flush to the actual bumper. So this will now all uh, be able to sit flush against the body. So completely done. And as you can see, we've gained a ton of inches on clearance here. So the fronts are fully finished being mocked up. They're already fitted. They are completely ready for paint. But before they get sent off the paint, I wanna go ahead and show you what they look like on the Mini because now it's like the realization has come in that this is now going to be a wide body Mini Cooper. Look at this. Look at the massive difference. <laughs> that, like this is where it's going to be coming out to. Look at the factory wheel. No spacers. Like that is crazy. That thing looks so good so far. Look and then I'll show you the other side. It is coming out really, really, really nice. Like I said, we're ready for paint right now. So uh, we're basically, now that these are fitted, ready to go. Um, eventually to put them on permanently, if you will. Um, now we're just gonna take them off and then prep them for paint. I didn't realize, like in the body world, how much fitting actually needs to be done for something like this. Um, I'm not sure if I would have done this at home. Like, this is something that I think is better to have a body shot because they can literally do everything that they need to do um, in order to get these things fitting and looking just right. This way they have that factory fit and finish. Um, highly recommend going with a body shop to do a modification like this. I don't think I would do this myself in the house. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on to the rear now and start the cutting process. <laughs> So basically what we've done, and we've done this now on both sides of the Mini Cooper, but we've trimmed several inches off of 
um, of the metal over here and this is what we ended up with, right? And so this is what you'd end up with. Now, this isn't something, once again, that you have to have to do. It's just if you really wanna go above and beyond and get maximum clearance, this is how we've done it. Um, next thing that we're gonna do is obviously we need to weld these things um, back together. So we'll get this all pressed back in and welded back together properly. Um, this way it is structurally sound as well. Um, and then of course, we'll go ahead and get the, um, the fender flares on. In the meanwhile, what we're gonna be doing is now we're gonna be prepping these for painting. So we're gonna clean up like all of these like rough edges that you see here. We're gonna clean all of this up, get this all sanded down really, really, really nicely. Get any of these imperfections out here get it primed and then get it ready for paint. So the next time you see these fender flares, they will all have been painted. We're doing these in um, the gloss black. And then what I'll go ahead and do is I'll get you a final shot here of what the finished product will look like once we've added in the panel bonding and getting it to um, sit in and be structurally sound as well. Now it's been roughly about 24, more like 36 hours um since that last video clip that i just shown here um i wanted to give you a brief update and like a part of the paint process so let me just show you really quickly what's been going on okay so these are the front fenders those are the rear fenders um and the fender arches if you will um basically what we did because these were fiberglass um Kamal ended up doing a special fiberglass primer over these things, um, which he let sit for about 24 to 36 hours. Um, and then he used another primer over that. Well, he, he did something called blocking in between, which is basically sanding in between. Um, and so he basically did that in between uh, the first original primer. Um, and then he did this primer. The reason why he did it this way like on both of these pieces, he was explaining it to me, is so that the paint doesn't like peel off. Like this is the proper way of doing things. Um, now after this, and as you can see, he did the back pieces um, here too. And I'll show you the side skirts here in a second. But um, the reason why he did it this way, and, and like once again, the reason why he's doing all of this this way, and the reason why he's not putting this into any sort of like heating booth, once again, I live in Central Florida here. The shop here, um, Dynamic Designs, is in Central Florida as well. Um, he was explaining to me that the proper way of doing this, of curing um, all of these things, to let these things cure naturally, it is a slow process, but it's the right way of letting these items cure. And then next on from here, these things will go into paint, and then he's going to let them cure for about, I think he said uh, four days, three to four, maybe even five days, he's gonna let the paint cure naturally on all of these items, and then we'll go ahead and start fitting them to the car. Okay, and as you see here, here's the side skirts, because once again, I want like a seamless gloss black look on everything. Um, so these, same thing, he did the exact same thing on these pieces as well. So basically, this is where we're at to this point. Um, I'll show you the front lip here in a second, um, which is gonna be a completely separate video. Uh, that is the carbon fiber front lip video. So I'll give you a status update in this video on that, but obviously there will be a video on that as well um, that comes out. But basically um, repainting the carbon fiber front lip to match and gloss black to all these pieces. I wanted something that's super seamless and clean looking. And so therefore um, we're painting the carbon fiber front lip as well. All right, and then on the carbon fiber front lip, as you see, the gloss clothing is no more and it has all been uh, sanded down, getting ready. Now, what he's gonna basically do, I think he puts on what's called like an adhesive promoter. Um, he'll put that on first, let that cure, and then he'll go ahead and paint this, the gloss black, um, to match the other pieces that we have going on here. Anyways, that's a quick update where we stand so far. Um, next thing we have to do, I believe, is to finish the panel bonding on the Mini Cooper. Um, and then from there, these things, well, we'll let obviously that cure for plenty of time, several days. And then from there, these things, all these parts will be uh, finished in paint and cured. And then we could go ahead and put them onto the Mini Cooper. Um, and then we still gotta do the wheels and I believe I'm gonna do a uh, lug nut conversion. So I'm gonna go from the lug bolts to the lug nuts as well, um, which I'll show you later on in the video, but I'm going with um, lug conversion, I think is what they're called, or lug stud and nut conversion uh, from MMR. I'll include links in the description box below to everything that was installed 
in this video. So if you are interested, of course, you can pick up any of the parts. Um, or if you're interested in obviously booking service here, I'll include links in the description box below to Dynamic Designs. Um, this way, if it's something that you're interested in doing, you could go ahead, check out in the links, uh, in the links below. Um, and of course, hit them up, let them know that Bertini from YouTube sent you, and of course, they'll take care of you. All right, well, we got it mounted on now. So as you can see, the gloss black paint, it came out looking so good. Let me just show you down here. Look at this thing. This thing looks so nice right now. I mean, it came out really, really good. Um, right now it's fitted on with um, all of the bolts. What we're gonna go ahead and do though is we still have to put the, um, the tiger seal or the tiger bond on, but we're gonna do that and then um, we'll go ahead and obviously it'll be permanently fitted, but look at this thing. This thing came out <laughs> so freaking nice. The front lip, I mean, actually I'm super glad after seeing it like this, I'm super glad that we decided to go with the gloss black front lip because it really does in this kind of like styling right here, it really does make such a huge difference. Um, meaning not broken up by like gloss black carbon fiber, just going the gloss black to the gloss black. I mean, that thing looks like factory finish quality. It, it just, I mean, it looks really, really good. Look at this. It looks so good. That came out really nice. But anyways, that's a quick uh, status update on this. All we have left to do is um, to pop in the, like whatever it's called, Tiger Bond or Tiger Seal Bond, whatever it is. Um, and then, yeah, it'll be pretty much permanently on the vehicle and that's it. But so far it is coming out good. And look at that gap, <laughs> the gap is crazy. So we still obviously have to fit the new wheels on here as well for this to, to sit right. But uh, yeah, it uh, it's looking good so far though. It's coming out really, really nice. And I wanna show you here because we're still working on this side. Um, just what the panel bonding uh, looks like, but uh, really, really solid stuff, really good stuff. And um, this is basically what it looks like, and this is how it fills in the gap. And once this thing sticks together, these things are not coming apart. I've seen this panel bonding stuff on really, really high horsepower chassis where they're trying to glue the pieces together or get them to stick together. And this stuff is just like, but basically like welding, like welds. So really, really, really tough. But that's basically what what it is, and as you can see here, we took quite a bit out of of this. So, um, yeah, but it came out really nice. So this is just an update on this side. Obviously, this side is not yet complete. Um, we'll go ahead and finish up this, finish up the front, and then uh, yeah, show you all the finished product. So it's out here getting detailed. The detail just finished up. I still have to um, take it home and get the new wheels on it. I also have um, new studs. We're gonna do the lug, uh, lug, what is it? The lug conversion to the stud and lug nut conversion. So I got a set of lightweight ones uh, from MMR Performance that they sent to me. Um, super lightweight stuff, so we still gotta do that conversion. Um, and then we also have to put on, obviously, the new wide wheels. But let me show you what this thing looks like. So far, it came out looking so, so good. It looks super sweet. Um, it looks brand new. It looks like it came from the factory uh, this way. I mean minus the current wheels that are on it. But uh, yeah, huge shout out again to Dynamic Designs Automotive here in Central Florida. This thing and the care that they took of my car, my vehicle, my mini, my baby, it just came out looking super, super good. So check it out. As you can see, this thing came out super, super nice. Very happy with it. The paint, I mean, just everything. This thing looks flawless right now. Have to get in it, take it back to the house. Let's get the stud conversion on and get the new wheels fitted so we can get rid of this really, really crazy gap that we now have on this Mini Cooper. All right, well, we got our handy dandy notebook. I mean, scale. The Blue's Clues reference for those of you who don't remember. Anyways, we'll go ahead and start off with the rear wheel and see how much this thing weighs. All right, so the rear wheel weighs in at, I'm gonna have to put this on here and then take it off. Give it a second. 21.4 pounds for the rear wheel. And now for the front wheel. The front wheel weighs in at 
19.6 pounds. You know, I was just thinking we should probably weigh one of each of these rubbers just to see in case you guys all want to end up with some lighter tires if there even is any lighter tires. So here's the front wheel, or front tire I should say. The front tire weighs in at 22.6, God. That's crazy, the rubber weighs more than the wheel. All right, and now the rear tire. All right, and now the rear tire weighs in at 24.2 pounds. That's crazy, these rubbers weigh more than the wheels. But they look so beefy, I don't even care. All right, now I do have to take everything to get mounted and balanced properly, and so what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna load up the wheels or rims and the tires into the van, go ahead and head down to one of the shops who's gonna help me with getting this all on. We're gonna get everything mounted and balanced and then come back and prep it for install. Okay, now, oh, let's weigh up the factory uh, wheel and tire setup. All right, so we are at 46.8 pounds. And let me see which is this. This is, uh, oh, that is heavy. Holy crap, that is heavy. Um, 46.8 pounds, and I think, I think this is the rear, maybe? Um, because I know there's two different tires on it, but, um, yeah, so, 46.8 pounds. So, already, at least on the front where it matters the most, um, we're saving, uh, per corner, we are saving, what, five, I think that's five pounds, five pounds and four ounces or something like that. Uh, by going with the VAD design wheels, and that's on the front. Yeah, so on the front, we are saving uh, five pounds roughly, or five pounds, four ounces. And on the rear, we're saving one pound exactly. Um, so 5.4 ounces off of the front, where obviously it matters the most on a front wheel drive car. Um, and then we're saving um, one pound even on the rear uh, tire setup. Now, keep in mind though too, these are 205. So these are 205s all the way around, and these are 17s. We went up to 18 inch wheels, and our fronts are 245s, our rears are 255s. So like massive, massive uh, more tire that now we have a much bigger contact patch that we have now than what we had before. So not only did we end up reducing unsprung mass on each of the wheels, we reduced, um, well, each of the corners, but we also um, reduced the overall weight of the vehicle and we got a much larger contact patch um, with the ground. So overall, I think 100% worth going with the wheels from Bad Design because they're significantly lighter than the stock setup and they're significantly um, wider with better contact patch. So highly recommend the VAD design wheels. And we're loaded up and ready to go. So just got over here to Palm Tire and Automotive. Um, they are located here in Mineola. I believe it's Mineola, Florida. Um, if not Claremont, we always get confused because of our borders. I'm pretty sure it's Mineola though. Um, by the way, super fair pricing. Um, great quality customer service, super, super clean shop over here. Um, basically what I'm gonna be doing, only because I have other stuff that I gotta do, is I'm gonna go ahead and drop off the wheels and tires here. This way they can go ahead and get them mounted and balanced properly for me, and then we'll go ahead and pick them up a little bit later. Thanks to Movie Magic, check this out. All right, rubber is mounted on the wheels. Everything is mounted and balanced. This is the gentleman who did it. This is Ian over here at Palm Tire. Um, Ian, if they're interested in getting servicing, like booking here, um, whatever it is, right? How do they get a hold of you? Uh, palmtire.net or 352-394-3280. Awesome, well, thank you guys so much. Appreciate you guys. Have a good one. Well, wheels and tires are back in my garage. Once again, huge shout out to Palm Automotive for taking care of me and getting me in and out of there with great customer service and making sure they didn't scratch my rims in any way, shape, or form. That is like my biggest fear with wheels, <laughs> especially these. These were obviously imported into the United States and so for me, definitely did not want to scratch these things because they're kind of like a one of one, if you will. And so uh, huge shout outs to them for not scratching on my rims. Anyways, now it's time to get these things on the Mini Cooper and mounted so we can see what it looks like. I have to show you this, by the way. Like I said, this is uh, a kit from MMR, so MMR Performance. It's their stud and nut kit. Um, they have a few specific types, but I just want to show you, uh, I think I had it the right way, actually, the first time. I want to show you the weight 
on one of these things. It's crazy. Look how beautiful, by the way. These things are so, so nice. They're really, really nice. Um, it's like the open-ended uh, setup, but let me just weigh one of these here. Um, I'll do it in grams since it's so lightweight. Um, so in grams, it comes out to, let's see if I can get it to stick, maybe this way. Here we go. 91 grams. So super, super lightweight stuff. Really, really high quality stuff. This stuff looks amazing. I'd highly recommend this even if you don't have a conversion um, like mine, even a wide body conversion, just doing these anyways, because it makes it a lot easier to actually put your wheels on when you have a stud um, kit like this. So really, really high quality stuff, super lightweight. As I said, um, we're gonna go ahead and get some uh, high temperature blue Loctite on these things. And then I have my, my torque wrench over here and we'll get these things onto the Mini Cooper and then get the wheels on and get you a final finished product. All right, well, this is the moment you all have been waiting for. This thing came out super sick. These, uh, these VAD Design uh, Mini Flares, these things are so, so nice. Uh, the front lip, uh, the wheels came out looking so good. Y'all ready? Here you go. So as you can see, this thing came out looking absolutely amazing. Uh, really happy with the way that these wheels came out, with the way that the tires came out, the overall fitment. I think it's because VAD Design does their uh, fenders. Um, and so the wheel setup is absolutely like super spot on to the fender flares because obviously they make the wheels, right? Or they make the fender flares and so, if they make the fender flares, they're obviously gonna build the perfect stance. And so um, if you end up doing these fender flares, highly recommend you go with a set of their wheels. They have several different designs. As you saw, they're really, really lightweight wheels. Um, and the, the fitment is just, I mean, it is just perfect. Look at this, look at that. It's just like 100% spot on. It's like it, it can't get any better. It's just so nice. And then are we gonna talk about these 255s? Holy crap, this thing looks like it's like, it's so like devilish right now and so aggressive. It's like it's gonna eat the ground. Oh my God, that is so meaty. Really? Nothing. For the first time in my life too, when it comes to cars, I'm not 100% sure if the back is my favorite or if the front is my favorite, because obviously the back looks super, super sick and aggressive. But look at this thing, <laughs> the front does too. I mean, with the meat coming out on the, on like the tires, that thing looks so, so aggressive and wicked. It, it really does look like this mean devilish mini. And then I think now too with the red accent, you have the red stripe there and then my red seat belts. Um, and then the red line on the carbon fiber steering wheel. I mean, this thing is just looking so good. Oh, I can't wait to do the GP spoiler already. It's just gonna add to this look. This thing came out so nice, really happy with it. And I think, as I said before, um, Dynamic Designs Automotive did a killer job installing this. They really took their time. Um, the paint came out flawless. The installation came out flawless. They made sure this thing was absolutely perfect. I mean, everything is just amazing on this. Really happy with that. And don't forget, if you're interested in purchasing anything I've installed in this video, I'll include links in the description box below. Make sure to let them know that Michael Bertini from YouTube sent you, and of course they're going to take care of you. By the way, I just looked down and I realized, I totally forgot we went to the stud conversion. <laughs> Check this out. These things came out looking so nice, and obviously I'm happy that they're really lightweight. Um, I think at some point I really do got to install um, the MMR big brake kit. That thing looks crazy, and I think like a six pot, 
And this thing is just gonna, with the cross drilled rotors, I think is really gonna make this this uh, pop even more than it already does right now. But uh, yeah, those those came out really, really nice. With that being said, that's all I have for today's video. Make sure if you have not yet clicked that subscribe button, you go ahead and click that subscribe button and the notification bell, this so you could stay up to date on all of my build series content. Most importantly, make sure you're putting out good energy into the world and you're paying it forward. I'll check y'all out later. Bye now.